Football here with George Warren. We are just about to go to the SSC Arena ahead of a huge night of boxing. Talk us through this. You must be excited. I can't wait to get there. Um, look, you, you know what you're always going to get with a Belfast crowd. They're, they're, they're tribal, right? They get behind their guys like no other city. Um, fully, you know, fully hoping Michael comes through. He's not our fighter. He's not a Queensbury man. So it's quite nice for me to be able to sit there, watch a fight and not be too worried if our man's going to get the victory. But no. For us, it's great to be collaborating with Conlon Boxing and with Top Rank, bringing a great night for BT Sport tonight. And uh, yeah, we've got a great undercard as well, haven't we? Well, look, there, there, are, there is plenty of Queensbury interest on the undercard, including a man in the featherweight division who has been making a little bit of noise. He's called the Wrecking Ball. I guess he's on the undercard for a bit of a reason. Talk, us why, uh, talk to us about why Nick Ball's here. Well, it's one of the reasons, apart from trying to deliver quality for our broadcaster and for fight fans, one of the reasons that we wanted to do this show is because we want Nick to break through. That's, that's the idea. And the first call, if he comes through tonight, in a tough fight, very competitive fight, guy that's coming to win, unbeaten guy. But if he comes through this, first call on Monday is the top rank to try and fight the winner. OK, sounds good. Well, look, talking about big calls, making them in boxing, uh, a bit of news came out last night. Mike mm -hmm. Coppinger put out a report and he said that George Warren, yourself, has been in touch with Eddie Hearn about making Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua. What can you tell us? Um, well, it's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's a relief. A, yeah, I mean, it's, it, listen, it has happened. Um, look, I mean, long story short, Spoke with Tyson on Monday, um, obviously on the back of knowing by then that Usyk Dubois was going to be happening and we were preparing a bid. Question was put to us, what fights are out there? What, what are the biggest fights possible that we can make? AJ's name came up in that conversation. Of course it would. It's a huge fight. And the instruction was quite clear, go and try and make that fight. So the following morning, put an email over to Eddie, made a formal offer. Um, same terms as for December. Mm -hmm. So exactly the same deal as far as we're concerned. We're ready to go. Tyson wants it to happen, so do we, and I hope they do too. Some of the feedback, obviously, you know, f fans uh, have seen this story play out before, so there's understandably a bit of frustration. Some of the feedback was, oh, I bet it's going to be a 90-10 split. Just to confirm what you said there, it's the same deal as what would have happened back in December? Yeah, exactly the same deal. So, you know, I think it's fairly established, it's on record, the contract was, you know, if 99% wasn't the right number, 98% is the right number in terms of where we got to on that contract. And the commercial terms, importantly, were agreed and accepted. They're exactly the same deal, exactly the same terms. Um, we got enough time, hopefully this time, to get it done if they want to do it. But look, they made it clear as well in that conversation that they're exploring other opportunities for Joshua. And we've got to still explore other opportunities for Tyson. We can't put all our eggs in one basket. But at the end of the day, the priority is to see if we can make it. If they want to make it, it's there to be done. Well, Tyson put out a post last night as well. We t he tagged in Anthony Joshua and, and loads of, of different accounts. And he said, the draft contract has been sent over. I'm not going to bother you too much, but the draft contract's with you. Eddie Hearn's come out this morning and said there is no draft contract. What, what can you tell us? Well, I mean, that Tyson's, Tyson's a boxer. He's not, he's not a lawyer. He's not a promoter. Um, you know, I think that might be him maybe slightly misunderstanding how how the approach and how the strategy's got to go down to make big fights. You know, you start with a formal offer, which we've done. If the other party accept that formal offer, which I'm hoping they will, or at least engage in discussions to have it, ha have it happen. If that happens, then we go back to the contract. But what he's referring to there, in my opinion, is the fact that the contract was, and you know, I think this is well, well accepted by both sides. I think Eddie said it himself. You know, the contract was very, very close. A couple of small, you know, tweaky things that needed to be sorted out. That in my opinion, we could get together next week, whenever they like, sit down, get it done. So how confident are you that things could get moving here? Because it feels like it's, like, like when Eddie's talking about it, he's saying, I've got a great relationship with George Warren. You know, he doesn't want to get hostile about it or anything. Everything seems kind of like you're talking. Yeah, listen, we're talking. And like I say, the instruction is from Tyson, I want the biggest fights out there. That's what I want. You, you know, Usyk's not available. He's got to fight Daniel Dubois. We're hoping that Daniel can pull off that upset. What an amazing night that would be for British mm -hmm. boxing. It's a tough ask, but Usyk's out of the picture. So Tyson wants to fight in the summer. Tyson wants the biggest fights. Joshua is the biggest fight. Him and Tyson Fury is the biggest fight in boxing, probably in world boxing right now. So we've got to try and see if we can do it. That's our job. That's the instruction. Um, it's not about calling people out and, you know, Blurring, blurry messages and trying to trying to go people or anything like that. They've made it clear they've got this other 
opportunity that they want to maybe hear from from the Saudis. Um, ultimately, Tyson's told us he wants to just get on and make big fights. If they want to do the same, that fight, there is no bigger fight to do in the UK this summer. So, I don't know. Look, fingers crossed, it's, um, it's firmly in their court. You know, if they want to do it, it's not about, you know, putting up roadblocks, making difficulty. I don't want any kind of back and forth. I think they've been quite respectful of that. We want to be the same. Let's see if we can do it. And if we can't, move on. Look, my fingers are certainly crossed, George. Um, Usyk versus Dubois. The purse bid has all happened now. The winning purse bid was $8 million from K2 Promotions. Um, how did you expect that purse bid to play out? Is it kind of as you expected there? Yeah, look, I mean, it's always, it's always very difficult when you're on the lower end of the purse bid split. I mean, it was a 75-25, and I think you go through the record books and probably 90% of world championship purse bids usually tend to go with the promotional side that have got the champions specifically if they've got you know if they've got value and they, they back themselves to do it we tried to do a deal we couldn't agree terms so we knew we were going to bids and we knew we were going to have a tough time doing it we put our value on it um they put their value on it they've won it it's eight million dollars you know it's it's a fairly good payday for daniel it's a good opportunity tough tough fight for him but look he's he's young he's hungry he's going to go and he's going to try and upset everything and what do we know about the broadcast situation on that fight um, it's at their discretion. It's totally at their discretion. They own the rights. Look, we're going to be certainly sitting down and trying to do that with Alex. It would be great to get it done. Um, but look, he's gonna, I'm sure he's going to pitch it around and he's going to do what's best for his, his event and to make sure that those numbers stack up. He's got now $8 million to, to, to basically cover to make sure that, that, that the event comes out and it's break even for him at the very least. So it's up to him. It's not for me. Right, final one then, George. We've got the earlier ring walk time of nine o'clock tonight. Um, I understand you're you're sort of the the mediator that got in between all the promoters, and you you went out with nine o'clock. How did that all come about? Oh, I mean, look, it was for us. We we announced the event, and then quite quickly afterwards, we saw the other two events get announced. And it's great for British boxing to have three world title fights happening in a month, let alone in a, it, on the same weekend. It's frustrating for fans, but at the same time, it shows perhaps how strong boxing is right now and the market that we've got over here and what we've been able to grow so for me it was very very simple um pick the phone up had the conversation with matcham had the conversation with boxer both those conversations everyone wanted 10 o'clock no one was really prepared to budge so i spoke with vt sports spoke with top rank obviously this is on espn plus and i think we just made the grown-up decision to go at nine o'clock so fans don't have to choose hopefully they'll watch us they then want to tune in and watch that. They can. We don't want to be an obstruction to that. It's, uh, look, it's a great night for boxing tonight in this country. Cannot wait for it. Thanks for speaking to me, George, and uh, let's go to the venue. Perfect. All Cheers, right. David.